let's begin by setting up a book in Affinity Publisher. This is a standard book and you can see I've got a 6 by 9 inch standard novel size set up in uh, that should be my presets. There we go, you can see it up there. Let's go down to the book, there it is. Standard book. Now this is a standard because it's 6 by 9 we're going to default to the master, so it will create master pages to begin with. Now the pages, we're going to set up facing pages, so there'll be a left and a right page, facing pages. Don't worry about this, if you're printing to KDP or anybody else, they'll want single pages, but you do that in export, remember that. Don't set up single pages here, it's a real pain. Going to arrange them horizontally, and we're going to start on the right, so that page 1 is on the right. Now this is standard for any book. If you open a, a decently produced book, it, the chapters start on the right, all chapters start on the right, and the story starts on the right hand page. That's the recto page, recto verso. You'll come across those terms, I'm sure. I'm going to start with the number of pages are 7. Now, this is, there's a reason for this that you'll see later on, because we've got a front cover page, not the cover that goes on the book, that's separate, that's a separate file and you do that separately. This is the in creating the interior of the book. But most printers, including KDP, want that first page to be the same as the cover, so it'll be a title page, and then there's other pages after that. We'll get to it as we get to it. The standard colour for books, CMYK, that's what you want, that's standard. Don't do transparent backgrounds. Um, most publishers, including KDP, really hate that. Margins, now you've got to include the margins. Now there's an inner margin, which is the margin there, the centre of the book to the first margin. The outer margin of 0.5 inch is that margin out there. Now both of those margins, you can't see the left page here, but you will. That's the, the left and the right margins, that's the gutter. Your gutter has to be slightly bigger than the outer margin, because you've got a fold in the book there, and if you've got many pages, you'll end up cracking the spine of the book to try and read what's in there. You don't want that. Now standard is 0.76 top margin, 0.76 bottom margin. Depending on how you want your book to look, you can change those. The bleed, now you do want bleed, and that's that outer red line you can see right around it. So you can take your images, if you place them on a page, right out to that bleed line. That way they'll get trimmed off where the dotted line is, and you won't have any little white borders. Now if you haven't got images within your standard book, then still leave the bleed there, but when you export, don't export it with bleed. KDP particularly hates bleed on the inside of a book, on the interior, because it messes with the size. So it's not so much KDP, it's what you want to do. Now, let's continue. We've got everything set up there, ready to go. Let's click Create and see what happens. There we go. Now there's the master page. Let's click on that. There's the Recto Verso. Right and left. The right page and the left page. Now it's Master A. Whatever you put on those pages will appear in all those pages. And I can show you that later on. But you will put some things in there, like page numbers, and we'll get to that later. Page 1 we can see here. Now, page 1, you can clearly see the left-hand border, which is the gutter border, is wider than the outer border, and that's the way it should be. Let's have a look at the double pages. That's page 1 where it's starting. And there you go. There's the double pages. This would be the start of the story if you were starting there. But we're starting on that page. So that's page one of the story, or the title page. Why have we got seven pages? Well, let me show you that.
there's you could, let's look at the master page first. There's still nothing on the master pages. I haven't put the um, page numbers on there. There's page one, and it's a translation of Beowulf. Been in the public domain for about three centuries. There's page two of the document. Page 3, page 4, page 5. I've started a table of contents there. There's another blank page there, which I'll put maybe a dedication or something. That's page 6. Now there's page 7, where I've actually started the story. So you've got page 1, title page, page 2, um, the credits for the book if there are any, or dedications if there are any. There'll be a copyright notice there perhaps. Um, there'll be something there like a blurb about your business perhaps. A short blurb, people generally won't read it. Table of contents. Allow, if it's a really long book and you've got lots of chapters, that's what that second page is for. Allow two pages for your table of contents. They can get quite large if you put lots of table, lots of chapters in your book. You can see there there's only two so far, so there's room for more on that page there. There's page one beginning, and so the story continues. It's unformatted, except I started with a chapter two. There'll be a chapter 3 down here somewhere now. That one hasn't been completed yet. And so on down the book. What have we got? We've got 91 pages right to the end there. Now that's completely unformatted that far into the book. So it may end up with more pages, in which case you can add pages and... When you're down that far, you can you can see there, you can make sure the text flows out to the next page by using that there. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll go back to there. We'll go back to there, to this original one I set up. Now, I'll show you how to do this one, and we're starting with this one. So let's begin this short part of the exercise by looking at how we adjust the master pages. Now these are facing pages, so your master is going to be A and B, but all on one master page. And it's quite simple for a 6x9 straightforward print book. We're not talking about e-books, we're talking about print books, where you've got a gutter in the middle. Now we've got a number of um, inclusions in this, one of them being the page numbers. Now the standard page number is left and right on the page and you put them just inside the margins. If you put them outside the margins, some of the publishers like KDP for example will complain loudly about material being outside the margins. So don't put material outside the margins and you think, but I'm going to lose half my page. They're just the margins and you haven't yet put in your text boundaries. And within those margins, you've got a page number, which you input by going to text, insert, fields, and page number. You see that? Right there. Now, you can't fill it in because it's already done, but that's okay. Same over there. What you do is you just copy that one and paste it over there, and you've got it in exactly the right place. Now, we want to put in the first seven pages, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Page seven is where the first page of your book, of your story, starts. But here we've got page one. So let's look at page one. Double click on that so it brings it in. Now you can see what I've got here is, I've just got to bring that down a little bit is a boundary. 
Now, I'm not going to spend the time of typing things in, but that's where I'm going to put the heading. And the heading, you may have noticed, was this one here. So let's just copy that whole thing. We should be able to get that. Where's my layers panel? Layers, there, Control C. Now let's go back to the other one. select that, delete it, but what I want to do is paste that in there. Now it's too high, so we bring it down. Otherwise it overwrites that page number. You don't need it right to the bottom of the page because that's all you're putting in there. Now page two and page three. Let's see on the other one, we've got on page one and page two. Page two is one of those. So we've got that text frame completely there. So let's go and copy that one. You'll notice that that's not the master, it's the page. So we'll go back to the one we're creating. Which is that one there. Let's just plonk that straight in there. Now we don't want it over the numbers again. See how that's nicely placed there, so we can bring that right down there. You'll notice there's a center line down the page. That's very handy for centering things. You can put that in yourself. That's showing up there because it's in there as well. Now we've got page three. What have we got on page three of the other one so far? Nothing in page three of the other one. There's a text boundary, a text a text frame, sorry. So let's copy the text frame. You want a text frame in this because you're going to be putting things in this. This is the front matter of a book. And you know what the front matter is, of course. Now let's go to page four and five. Let's go to page four and five. There's nothing in, in this one except that. Frame text. Go back to page four here. Paste in the frame text. Again, bring it down so it's below the page numbering. Then we go to page five. Page five, we're going to take that one there, that layer there, copy that layer there, go back to page five here, table of contents. Now we want to bring that down so it's below that text frame, so it's inside the margin and below the page number, which is quite all right. That's just what you want. Now we'll take this. This is copy. This is the table of contents, the actual table of contents. Now that's for the one that I've already created. Now I won't update the table of contents because they will show nothing, because they don't exist. They're just copied straight from the one that does exist. You'll note this one's got all the chapters and pages. And we can update that later. Again, we go to page six, copy page six, paste page six, bring its margin down so it's inside the margins, and page seven, page seven of the other one, of the other document. It's the first page of our text. Let's copy that. Go back here. And put that in there. Now it's got text in it, and you can see it doesn't go further because there is no further text. So let's just take the text out of that. We don't want that in there. There we go. Now all of the text is gone. 
which is just what we want. There's no text in there. So let's just save that so we've got that far. Save. Now the magic happens here. Notice your text frame here is within the boundaries and it's nice and neat and we've got no text in there yet. So now you have your text frames, you're thinking, I've got another 200 pages of this book, how do I get them in there? Well, let me show you how this is done. Firstly, let's just check we've got the document. Now I've got Beowulf, the copy for the AP tutorial, which is here. And it's a copy that's been downloaded from um, the Gutenberg Press. And it's in text format, which is a bit of a pain, but there you go. Yours will be all nicely neat. You don't need to worry too much about formatting, but it's done in Word. That's the main thing. Now it should be in documents. But what I'm going to do here, you can see this here, and this is our text frame. We're going to find our document, our Word document. Should be in documents. And there it is there, Beowulf for AP Tutorial. And there's the start of it. Let's open this. Now this will automatically create all the pages you want to that point. Note it hasn't done it yet. That's still page 7. But this is where the magic happens. You'll notice that it's the right size there. You hold, you hover your mouse there so it looks like a, a barbell on its side with the arrow and you're pointing at that arrow. Now hold the shift key down. Nothing else. You can see the instructions actually are down the bottom of the page when I'm hovering over that. See down the bottom of the page? What we want to do is hold the shift key down and click that. Just give it a moment and there's the text magically appeared right down to page 198. So let's go back to the top. Page 7. Page 8. Notice how the text frames have been repeated exactly in their right place. And all of the text is there. It really is as simple as ABC. Now, of course, you can go and format all that, do what you like with it, and then because you've got your table of contents in here, make sure that your 1, 2, 3, your chapter headings are the right sort of. the right sort of, um, where are we, textiles, there we go. Now all of my headings are heading 1 or heading 2. Let's have a look at heading 2. Let's not get into this too much. Oh, I could probably be looking for ages. You can see I haven't formatted that text down there properly. That's okay, because this is a work in progress. You'll have formatted your text nicely. I'm not going into how to do tables of contents and all that sort of thing here. I'm showing you how to set up your document, pull some text into it, pull your document into it, and automatically create pages. That's far, far easier than trying to create pages yourself. Mind you, if you've got a very short book, that's as, that's as easily done as well. Now, that's all there is to it. I hope that gets you off to a good start. There are lots of other videos on my website talking about creating books using Affinity Publisher. Not writing them for you. No one can do that. You have to write your own book. And don't use AI. They sound terrible. Very clunky. But... There are lots of ways of writing your book, lots of software, and if you can get a PDF or a text file or a Word document, Word's really good for this because it just loads directly, it places directly into Affinity Publisher, makes your life a lot easier. Let's reduce that a little bit with the navigator. Pull that off to one side. Doesn't need to be that big. Okay, there we go. Now, I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, send postcards. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.